Hey, folks, welcome to InTheMoneyStocks.com's live trading action video. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here. Today's date is May 1st, which is a Wednesday. Hope everyone's doing well today. So let's talk a little bit about the FOMC decision today. Super, super dovish. Jay Powell about to get on the press conference and talk a little bit about what's going on. But overall, as you can see, markets like it. Why? Interest rates are falling. It was so dovish. That means more money generally shifted to the markets. Now, the key here is, and this is a tightrope, so interest rates, the 10-year yield can fall as long as it's because of a dovish Fed versus a weak economy. If interest rates were falling because the economy was horrid, then you would see the markets not liking that because that would affect earnings. This, in this situation, is so far a positive. Although, again, you have to wonder and you have to ask, what is the Fed seeing to be so bearish, or is it purely political, and are they following the lead of Trump asking for a rate hike? And again, basically, the Fed, from what I heard is setting the table for a rate hike either later this year or early in 2020. Um, and again, are they doing it politically, or is it because they see something on the horizon that is very concerning? And again, we'll find that out, but right now markets are up. Although I will say this, folks, if you had told me the Fed was going to be super dovish and Apple was going to be up tremendously on earnings. Take a look at Apple today, folks, up over $14 or 7% on earnings. And you told me that the SPY, the S&P 500, the spiders, would only be up 65 cents. I would have told you that you were smoking crack. I mean, bottom line is, I would not have believed you. I would have thought this market would have been up 2 to $3 minimum on the SPY. So again, that is kind of interesting. Um, in addition, there's no volume behind it as well. But again, you know, these type of things, I mean, you have to take that as the grain of salt. Apple's up huge. I mean, Apple alone is probably adding 60 cents to the spiders today, being up 7%. It's such a big weighting. So what's going on there? Why isn't the market rejoicing more? Why isn't Apple lifting more stocks? And why isn't the Federal Reserve statement shooting the market up much, much higher? So again, these are things we need to kind of focus in on, and we have to wonder, is that a signal that the markets are about to turn? I am seeing divergences to the negative side in a lot of RSI and stochastic charts and MACDs. Um, again, I utilize only divergences when I look at that. Other than that, it's not of use to me. But again, things like that definitely raise alarm bells, but we have to watch the market for price action to confirm it. All right. A couple other things going on today, folks. A couple things as well that I wanted to kind of point out to you. If we go to a daily chart, I am very intrigued by U.S. Steel. I'd like to see it dip to about 15 bucks, but I think anything between 15 and 15.50 is very interesting. One thing that caught my attention is that the, the Democrats and Trump are talking a $2 trillion infrastructure plan. Uh, that is very, very intriguing if you're into the steel side of things. And again, U.S. Steel being one of those. Uh, U.S. Steel reports earnings in a couple days. We'll have to see what they are. But again, it does make me a little bit more intrigued, especially as you get into major support down here. Um, if you look at the overall market and then compare it to the chart of U.S. Steel, I mean, look at this chart in U.S. Steel. It is just under pressure. It's been pounded and pounded and pounded and certainly is a little bit interesting. Okay, a couple charts that should raise alarm bells when you're seeing this type of thing. Take a look at Twilio today uh, or Twilio. Stock gaps up on earnings, crashes down. That's not good price action. What that was is institutions just dumping into the price action. They're trying to get out fast and furiously. Stock's down about 5% on the day. Notice if you look at a longer-term chart here, it's had quite a run, so that kind of makes sense. But again, you have to wonder who's buying it up here when it's already up massive amounts. I mean, this stock just a year or so ago, I mean, just you know, basically last April was uh, trading at sub thirty dollars and now it's hundred and thirty dollars almost 140 actually it was over 140 at the high today but either way that reversal candle is very bearish when you see those types of things Garmin's another one now Garmin didn't gap up today but look at this drop it was kind of leading the indicator here as it was coming back in right to the 50 and then gapped below support here and continued to fall. This is what we call a river theory in the PBT methodology and this stock will continue to fall to gap window now and eventually break through and go to gap fill. So that's very, very bearish for Garmin as well. Another chart that caught my eye today was this chart on Akamai. While it's still up on the day, when its stock gaps up like this and can't hold its gain and has a big red candle like this, a lot of technical damage is done. And again, notice we looked at other charts today. I mean, just looking at the uh, the Twilio chart, that that price action is not healthy price action. 
all right? A stock gapping up big and then just giving it all up and going negative or giving it all up in this case and only being up a couple percentage points, not good at all. So these type of things, again, raise you know somewhat of alarm bells, although at the same time you have to appreciate that the Fed obviously at this point in time is doing its best to really support markets. If we flip back to the spiders, again, you can see we're not up much today. But again, with the Fed statement, we this is where we were trading into the Fed statement, and then you ultimately went up here. Now you're kind of trading just up slightly. But again, the Fed is uber dovish with interest rates falling, assuming it's just because of the Fed and not because of the overall um, economic picture. Then money doesn't really have a lot of other places to go, so it goes into the stock market. Now again, the one switch will be if we start to see economic activity really get bad, and then interest rates fall because of that, then you don't want to be in stocks, and you'll see money run from stocks because obviously earnings are going to suffer dramatically at that point. So that's a very important differential here to watch. All right, bottom line is, guys, again, we will see where this market trades out. Starting to come in a little bit as Jay Powell is beginning his uh, press conference, and again, we'll see where we are at the close. Stay tuned. Come join us at InTheMoneyStocks.com. Take the seven-day free trial.